Hello boys and girls, uh, here's another short video on something that uh, we are doing today, which is photography. Now don't all switch off or go and make a cup of tea. It's a really, really important thing for artists to have is uh, a good way of being able to take half decent photos of the artwork. And uh, it is something I do get asked about quite a bit because all my photography is done in house. I do it. Uh, but there are lots of um, cool little things and tips and tricks which I'm going to give to you which help you get a pretty good result when you're taking photographs. So I'm just going to talk through the process because actually we're, we're going to be photographing that, which is a new painting. So that's what we're going to do first of all. Okay, so I appreciate you may not have one as gigantic as that to photograph, whatever size it is and whatever medium. Actually, the broad principles do remain the same. And the first one, forget all the tech for a minute, is decent lighting. Okay, so I'm blessed with some nice natural light, which is great. And the whole gallery in the studio is all these wonderful skylights, which is great. However, that does present problems, especially on things like sunny days and the fact that there are ridges um, that cast shadows onto the paintings. And the fact that even probably we're shooting today, you can see that the top is much lighter than the bottom which is a problem. However, I'll talk to you about overcoming that as we press on. So getting a source of natural light is usually a pretty good idea. It gives you the best uh, range of colours when natural light shines upon your work, as opposed to doing it under artificial light. That's not always the case. A lot of artificial light uh, is used in photography studios. Of course it is. But I think for artwork, personally speaking, if you can get a source of natural light on it, I think it tends to probably look a little bit more authentic okay but either way is fine that's our subject matter that's what we're going to be photographing now because I need to stand quite a way away from it to get the full-on shot ready to be cut as well as the macro shots and the close-ups I'm going to be using two lenses now there's a stock one which comes with the camera which is a multifocal length uh, super zoom to non super zoom that goes far away I don't really know the technical terms um, and on this particular uh, Nikon, it's an 8 to 55 mil lens. However, you do tend to get a little bit of fish eyeing with it. Uh, a bit like using things like GoPros, you can get this sort of like fish eye on the lenses. So to combat that, so I don't have to do a lot of post processing when I'm inserting the images into Photoshop, I'll change the lens over. And what I'm going to use, I'm going to use a fixed focal length lens, of which this. I'll just get it off, it's a 35mm with a 1.8 focal depth, I think that's what it is anyway, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not the world's biggest expert, this is recommended to me, <laughs> let's see if we can actually get it on there, there we go. So what this basically means is, I mean, you've got a workable length probably from quite a way, way over to the studio, probably to, well, quite close up, but because it doesn't have an adjustable depth of field, you can only get certain types of shots with it. So for the full-on, perfect shots from a distance, I'm going to use a fixed lens. Uh, so this is a Nikon one, I'm not affiliated to them, uh, but this is a 35mm 1 to 1.8. And that's what I'm going to use for shooting the main shot of it. So that's fine. So I'm going to assume then that we've done all that. And by the way, I also have to recommend you put it on like a two sh second uh, shutter release if you've got that because you can stand away from the tripod. Tripod's also a good idea. You can also use the remote control to make sure everything is still. You can walk away from it, click the remote, boom, and off it goes and it takes the photograph. So remotes are pretty good. Now the camera I'm using here is a digital SLR with interchangeable lenses. It's quite fancy and to be honest with you, I have no idea what 90% of the functions do. But everything I shoot is on manual and I tend to do it through the viewfinder so I can accurately see exactly what I'm going to get. I don't tend to like using the LCD screen. Uh, I like to get my eyes actually in there and see what I'm shooting. So that's it really. It's quite a basic tw uh, what is it? 24 megapixel SLR camera. You can pick those up quite cheap these days. Standard lenses are great, but uh, a fixed focal lens, a focal length lens is a really good idea, especially if your work's going to be a little bit larger. Now, one thing you might notice compared to the <laughs> two paintings that are on the side, this is not stretched around the frame. So when I photograph everything, pretty much most of the time, it is done as a flat canvas. 
And this is done for quite a few reasons. One is a cost thing, if I'm honest, because I need to know that a new piece of work that I'm doing is going to look good, it comes out OK on the photographs, that actually it hangs correctly, without going to the expense and the time and the effort of stretching it around a frame if it's not going to be any good. The other thing of note is, is I don't always use the entirety of the canvas as the finished piece. And even now I'm thinking I might, this might get cut. I'm not entirely sure yet. But the main thing is I'm going to get some decent photographs. And then in post-processing, which we'll talk about in a minute, that's what I'm going to use as my template. Why? Memory cards are important. I use a Nikon memory card in here. But any decent branded card will be fine. These are SD, but for instance, Fuji come with their uh, XD cards, I think, and that's all it is. So it's just a standard 16 gigabyte SD card. That's it. So everything is going to go on there, and I shoot in the highest possible resolution. So on here, I'm shooting in fine format at six, 12, 24 million pixels, which is 6,000 by 4,000, and I'm shooting in true color with no white balance adjustment. So this is a raw JPEG, if you like, which is fine for getting the accuracy that I need when I'm doing the faraway shots. In fact, I also keep that when I'm doing the close-up shots. And that's what we're going to have a look at next. The process of shooting, then, this is what I do. I do the long shots of the full thing very first off. So here, I'm literally just framing it. It doesn't have to be that accurate, to be honest, as long as I've got everything in the shot. We know it's a little bit lighter at the top than it is at the bottom, but that's okay. We'll talk about that in a bit. I've got my two-second shutter. <sighs> Done. Light's okay today, but I still need a little bit of light in here. Uh, so I think I'm, my shutter speed is uh, one to two and a half, so it's uh, whatever that means, one or two and a half of a second or something like that. Uh, there's a little click for, uh, between when it takes the picture and the shutter open to so when it closes, so it's letting more light come in. But you just adjust that depending on your lighting conditions. So I'll take a couple at this distance because this is the whole thing. Next, I'm going to move in. That's why a tripod's really uh, good to use because uh, you don't have to worry too much about holding your camera. The more you hold your camera, the more you're liable to have normal body movement affect how accurate and how sharp the end picture is going to be. So now I'm going to take the corners. Now because I'm shooting at a high resolution at 24 million pixels, I might decide that there's a small part of this that I can zoom in on and actually take that as the photo that I want. So the key thing is here, once I've got all the corners, is I'm then going to go in a little bit further. Now I'm still in on, rather, with the fixed lens. So, and I'll tell you why. It's because the fixed lens is still good from this distance. I'm not looking for the super sexy macro shots. Okay, I'm just looking just to get the information. Even from these kinds of angles, so I'm about, what, three, four feet away? That's not too bad. I've got a little bit of rippling in the canvas, so I'm going to have to be careful about how the light's hitting that. So I'm going to have to tape it down at the bottom. But there's a few nice angles here of a few different shots, so I'm just viewfindering now just to be happy. Yeah, there, there's some pretty good angles. And all the time while I'm looking at something, especially as I'm an abstract artist, I'm looking for tiny parts of each painting, which really help to... I don't know, translate what the whole painting's about. Especially in my work, there's a lot, there's a lot of detail that goes into them. There's a lot of random detail, which sometimes you don't actually realise you've done. So I'm just trying to pick out some of the key focal points. There's a general, I don't know, kind of interpretation of what the painting actually looks like. So I quite like the white down here, that's quite nice. And I love the, the blue cells across the top. So we'll do a couple more. I'll say, realistically, for me, I'm only looking for six or seven photos, absolute maximum, when I put this onto the website. So it's not like I need to take 300 or anything. I'm not that precious. Oh, I'll hit that with my head. <laughs> right, and it's a bit too light, so we're just going to drop the... We're going to increase the shutter speed now. Make sure I've done it the right way. Yes. 
so that will just make it darker because there's less light coming in. So I think I'll do that bit as well because that selling looks nice. I'm at the top of the painting where the light is at its highest. So then you could hear that was a, a much faster shutter speed. I don't know if that will pick up on the mic. Okay, so, so that's my kind of broad shots done. I just want to get one of the white application down here because I quite like that. That's got a little bit of character. The sunset yellow and the purples. That's good. At the moment, I think I'm going to do with the macro lens because I think we're going to get some nice, some nice side shots. Okay, so now, because I'm at the bottom of the painting, there's less light hitting it. That was quite dark, so I'm going to reverse the shutter speed a little bit now, make it more open, so the shutter stays open. There's a much longer click, and that's much brighter, so I'm happy with that. So being able just to adjust depending on your light is quite critical, especially if you're using natural light. Okay, so we've done the wide shots from far away. We've got the bulk of the painting still using the fixed lens. So now I've changed over to the adjustable lens with the fixed depth of field. Oh, sorry, with the adjustable depth of field. I'll get it right in a minute. Now again, no expert on this, but I do know that uh, it will zoom out and find its own focal point uh, with a light press on the on-off button. So through the viewfinder now, I'm just going to try and find these real nice angled shots, these kind of macro shots that have you know, we've all seen them. They've got that, that thing in the middle which is in focus and then left and right always seems to be a bit blurred out. These, these tend to be really in vogue, these shots. So I found a couple now. So I quite like that green. That looks, that looks reasonable. Let's try another one of those because there's a little bit of gold peppered in there. And what I'm looking for here, I'm looking for it within the centre of the viewfinder to find a focal point. It doesn't always happen with my paintings because the camera doesn't know where to where to look out for the best. But that's pretty reasonable. Now I've got a little bit of light reflection on this, and that's because the paints are quite glossy. And unfortunately, unless I've got a black backdrop, literally wrapped all the way around this, this kind of photography area, I can't get rid of the reflections. It's just a nightmare. But you know, generally speaking, you can pretty much get what you need to get without having to resort to doing that. So I'm going to get two or three photos of the turquoise, because that looks quite nice. Boom. There's some nice little twists and textural elements here. So let's pop this back up again and see if I can get those. One of my other concerns is that I think the sunset kind of melanie yellow uh, at the bottom looks really nice. So I'm quite anxious to get that. Now the beauty of these lenses, because they've got a very wide depth of field, you can go really close. So I'm getting a lot closer now. I could also zoom in, although I'm not going to, because that, he said holding his breath right there, is not a bad shot at all. So I'll see if I can post some of these, so you can see well, yep, what I'm taking. Uh, and we'll pepper them into the video if we can, so you can actually get a real world idea about what the photos look like. Can't, can't guarantee that, but I'll try. Okay, so back at the top of the painting, a little bit light. So we'll reduce the shutter speed down now. That's much better. Don't let all the light in. So that's pretty cool. I'm liking that. So tripod down. This is why these things are so handy. Literally go any height whenever you want. And we'll see if we can get something nice going on here. I love, 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 love the colour combinations of pink, purple and yellow. Absolutely love them. So we'll get the shot, and that's right in the middle, on the remote control. Pretty good. Need to open the shutter again because it's slightly light, lighter down here. So we'll just take that shot again. Just noticed something is selling here. So do you know what? I'm going to get some of that as well. So this is selling both in purple and blue. And it's really interesting on the red. It's got a lovely effect. So boom, there we go. That is quite nice indeed. So I think this side of the painting is done. We've got some of the white already. The other thing I noticed, because I haven't really taken much of these rivers, is just to get something <coughs> pointing up on these little rivers uh, up the side here. Okay, so although it hasn't got a mountain of colours, this one, this is more about form and shape than it is over colour. There are still some really nice little elements on here, so we'll just get those. 
And then just for giggles, we're going to go in mega close now. <laughs> and just see if I can... Oh, yeah, that's good. I sound like a fashion photographer. Oh, lovely, look. Oh, that's wonderful. Look at that, it's beautiful. Right, but that actually is pretty good. So where's my sensor? Hello? No, our battery's all right. How very... Oh, there we go. Okay, that, that's pretty good. So we'll do one more of that so you can see it on the camera that we're videoing on. Let's see how close we can go in. All gone quiet. What's going on with that? So that's it, boys and girls. That's how I photograph. We've talked lenses, focal lengths, lining up for macro shots. We've talked about lighting, talked about the memory cards and a basic camera setup. So now that's all over. Out comes the memory card into the office, download it onto the computer, and that's when we'll start our post-processing, which we're going to use Photoshop for. So that will be on another video for you to look out for, when we'll talk about the basics of using Photoshop and why it's an essential tool if you're a creative. That's it, guys. Leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you on the next video.